Hello everybody, Joe Marquez here again from the Sons of Technology, and I want to showcase for you some whole class activities that you can do in Google Slides and also Google Jamboard. The cool thing about these apps is that you don't have to use them as presentation tools. They can be utilized as whole class creation tools. But let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's an activity called Who's in the Room that I always like to do at the very beginning of the year, whether it's for uh, K-12 classes or even in some of my high ed classes. I just love to get to know some of these students. Uh, one of the reasons I like to start with this because it helps to create a cadence on how we're going to actually work in a single slide deck but all on separate slides. If you don't create a cadence, there can be a haywire that goes on when you actually wanna do a project for a particular topic. Um, I call this Mr. miyagi the students, meaning we're gonna be doing an activity that has nothing to do with the content of the course. It's just an activity to get them to learn how to utilize Google Slides, add images, add text, and, and add layering of things within the slide. Um, a couple different things you need to begin with. One is, I definitely recommend creating a slide for every one of your students. You don't want it to be blank and the kids coming up and hitting the plus button because once one of this is created, somebody's gonna start writing on it and then another kid, a student's gonna create another one and they're gonna start writing on yours. It can get very chaotic. So I always recommend that you create all the slides ahead of time, just blank ones um, for the students. Now. Um, even with this, it can get a little bit crazy. Um, what I love to tell the students is uh, once we get into this, you're going to claim a frame, meaning as soon as you get in, you're going to write your name on one of these slides or one of these frames. Claim your frame. And as soon as somebody's name is on the slide, um, you, uh, you have to go on and move to another slide. Um, but that can still get a little chaotic, um, especially with our K through five or K through six students. Um, so a good way around that is creating the same slide deck with a numbered slide decks all the way down. Um, and you would and, and a lot of times students have seat numbers or, or uh, numbers in the class. And you could say, if you're number one, go to slide one, number two, go to slide two. Um, and so that would make it a little bit more, or more uh, streamlined when creating this project. Um, if you don't wanna go in and put all these numbers in, you could always say, if you're seat four, go to four. If you're seat five, go to five. And one, two, and three. Uh, if you're seat one, you go to 41. Seat two, go to 42. And seat three, go to 43. You can do it that way as well. But I highly recommend you have a strategy so that students are not deleting things off other students' slides and things can get a little bit chaotic. And once this is created, I'm gonna show you one that's actually finished. We did this with a class at Fresno State. You'll see all of these great who's in the room um, slides and all of these are meant for for the students to learn how to add text and how to add images and some people are overlaying images it's really great but if you want to keep track of all the students in real time like right here I had 18 students in this class you may have 40 you don't want to just keep going up and down I highly recommend when you're doing a whole class activity you go up to where it says view and change it to grid view and remember, Control-Alt-1. Just remember that for a second, I'll tell you why. So Control-Alt-1 will turn all of these slides into a grid view. And now you can actually see in real time who's doing what, who's adding what, and who's remaining on task. Now, the reason I say remember Control-Alt-1 is because when, when everybody's working on these slides, if you wanna go back to regular view, Every time you click here and somebody does something else on another slide, this entire menu goes away. And you're gonna like go into whack-a-mole going view, trying to click on a grid view. View, trying to click on grid view. But if you remember Control-Alt-1, Control-Alt-1, it'll change it back from one to the other without having to bring down that menu. It'll save you a lot of time when everybody's working and you wanna start switching from one view to the next. So that's a great activity to get them started. Now, when you have your cadence down, they start understanding how to work on these slides, you can now actually start doing some routines uh, for activities in class. One of them that I've shared previously, that I'm gonna share again, is called the slide snap. And the slide snap is, once again, we have all these frames already preset, and you would actually have this template ready for the students all the way down. And a slide snap is meant for students to take a screenshot of something they are working on, place that image there, and then talk about what they've done up to that point. So it's meant for like a quick check for understanding at any moment in your learning. And so that's what a slide snap is about, a slide of a snapshot 
of your learning. And notice we've added audio to this. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to do that through Screencastify because it is a really great tool to be able to embed right here in your SlideSnap. Another great activity um, that was created by John Crippo and Marlena Heburn is Sketch and Tell. This is out of their Edge Protocols book. And a Sketch and Tell is kind of like a slide snap, but the difference is they're actually creating their sketch or creating their activity right in the slide deck. They're not taking a picture anywhere else. And so you can see these are actual ones done by students and they're creating these images right out of the drawings up here. And they're adding um, what they've done and what they've learned and then they sketch what they've done and then they tell what they've learned, a sketch and tell. So it's a great way of utilizing Google Slides to actually have students model or create something on what they've learned. So Sketch and Tell is a great protocol as well. And remember, Control-Alt-1 can actually take us from the regular view to the grid view so you can see everybody working in real time. Very great technique to be able to check for all of that understanding. So bring it back to regular view. Now, I also love to do Sketch and Tell in Jamboard. Jamboard is a fantastic tool and I would highly recommend using Jamboard if digital inking or digital drawing is at the forefront of your learning outcomes for your students. Whereas over here in this sketch and tell, more just shapes and, and, and shape drawings is what I wanted. But if I want them to actually physically draw with their hand on the screen, I would use Jamboard to do this. And once again, they would draw or sketch what they've learned and tell you what they've learned. Sketch and tell. And so um, if you're looking for that grid view here, it's right up here at the top. If I click up here, if I expand that bar, I can see everybody working in real time. And so if this was a real class, I see everybody's doing a pretty good job sketching, but nobody's telling anything. So I can stop the class and I would say, okay, class, I want you to take a look here at number five. Number five is doing a great job because they've sketched out what they wanted to do and they've told me or they're telling me what they've learned, a sketch and tell. So utilizing Google Jamboard, you can still do a whole class Jamboard um, and then you can use the, uh, the, you can use this expanded frame bar to be able to see all the students working in real time. A really cool activity. If you don't want to do a sketch and tell with this, you can just do sketches, right? And so you can actually do a whole class where everybody gets their own half of a frame and they um, are, are sketching a, a map problem for you. Um, they're sketching a diagram um, of a cell for you. They're doing something like that with digital ink and images. And you can see all of that happening up here in real time. I love Google Jamboard for that particular purpose. Another cool um, little template that I've created for you is um, it's called the YouTube template. It's very similar to a sketch and tell or a, um, or a slide snap. The big difference here is they're going to be placing a video here on, on what they've done and then a project summary and then comments about either what they're going to do next or what difficulty they've had. And I love doing this because at the end you have a whole class YouTube channel to be able to look at. And how do you add that video? Let me show you. You would come up here, add Screencastify. And if you haven't used Screencastify, it's a very important tool in education today. I definitely recommend that you grab this. Um, and I definitely make sure that I have my, um, I'm going to go ahead and just click on desktop so that whatever tab I'm on, I can go through. And then I'm going to make sure that everything's working. Everything is good. I'm going to hit record. So I'm going to go ahead and record here and on my sketch and tell and say, uh, I'm recording a light bulb and there's a negative and a positive and the electrons flow out the negative through the light bulb and back through the positive. That's a complete circuit, which allows the light bulb to light up. And that's what I wrote over here on my tell. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing at this point and it will automatically take the video for me and it will upload it to my Google drive right up here. And it automatically places it in there. I don't have to even worry about where I'm going. And because here's the great thing. So once it's in my Google Drive, boom, it's done. I make sure I click on that shareable link so that the video will be shareable when I place it in my YouTube. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to go insert video from my Google Drive. And there it is right there. And, and, and once um, it's rendered, it will actually work perfectly in your 
YouTube template. And then all I do is I take this video and I'm gonna match it to the frame. Even though the aspect ratio is gonna be a little bit off, don't worry about it. There we go. And now when the students come in to, to read the project summary, I guess there was a little delay. So I'm gonna go ahead. So they would record that. They would type their project summary right here. They would come down and type their title. They would put the title of the project right here or their name and boom, you have your own very personal YouTube channel for your class. Really neat way of incorporating voice choice, written word and everything to uh, either um, have a, uh, a middle way check into a project or a final check or presentation of that project. Really cool ways to be able to do whole class instruction utilizing tools you and your students may already be familiar with. And if you've never used Jamboard before, great tool to get started with. And if you've never used Screencastify before, that is another tool you should definitely, definitely take a look at. Thank you so much. If you liked this video, please share it with the rest of your educational friends. And also, if you like this video, please definitely follow us on YouTube. Thank you so much and have yourselves a great day.